I believe that leadership is really a skill of influence. It is the most important skill that any human being can master. And I don't think of leadership as a position. I see it as a, a skill, a tool that all of us have to have. In other words, the quality of your life, I really believe, comes down to your level of leadership. Other people don't have to follow you to be a leader, but you have to live life on your terms. And the first person you have to influence is yourself. You know, whether you're fit or fat, uh, you know, whether your kids are uh, you know, on drugs or not, it's who has more influence, the guy on the street corner or you. Whether you're fit or fat is can you influence your own hands, your own body, your own mind to do what's necessary. So I think to be able to influence the thoughts, the feelings, the emotions, and the actions of another human being, that's what leadership is. We must have um, uh, kind of an identity for ourselves, a way of defining ourselves. And human beings don't usually stray from that. So if you consider yourself to be a conservative person or a shy person, I know the way you move to some extent. I know the facial expressions, the gestures, the way you use your body. And it's all consistent with the fact that human beings, our strongest drive is the need to stay consistent with how we define ourselves. If your self-definition is, uh, I'm a situation where I'm kind of, uh, what was the word he used? Uh, oh, shy. Shy. Th then you're going to find a way to get to a place where you kind of cower back. Right. The fastest thing you could do to change your experience would be to create a new little thing, a simple thing like erase. The minute you go, I'm shy, you go erase. That's a BS story. A BS meaning uh, belief system. That, that's just a story. And if you tell yourself a story long enough, you start to believe it. And once you believe it, you act like it. When you keep calling yourself shy, you believe it. You go, Tony, I've always been shy. Up until this moment, do something that's completely outside what you would normally do. Something, become somebody else. Decide who's the most playful, passionate, outrageous, fun person you know and behave like them for two or three days. Just push yourself to behave like that. And here's what's happened. It'll be shocking, it'll be weird, it'll be different, you'll feel uncomfortable, but after a while, you'll get reinforced. It's like, if you get a nice haircut, you, get, you make a change in the way you look, people will compliment you. You'll get some compliments, and those compliments will make you want to use those other parts yourself. We all want to be able to change the way we feel, and that's what I spend my life showing people how to do. And what most people don't know is emotion is created by motion. The way you move determines the way you feel. You have 80 different muscles in your face, 80. For most people, this is the largest area of unemployment in the country. <laughs> they use their ma the face the same way, they feel the same emotions over and over and over again. So what I was saying is, I have this deal with myself called priming. Every day, I say, look, you gotta have 10 minutes for yourself. If you don't have 10 minutes for yourself, you don't have a life. And I'm not gonna hope I feel good. I, don't, I just got back uh, six countries in 12 days. I was in India two days ago. Wow. And I woke up here wanting like, feeling like somebody ran me over with a truck. You know? <laughs> but and you I, got yourself psyched up. But the, but the way I did it is I do this process. It's 10 minutes, I put some music on, I do this massive change in my breathing so it radically changes the way I feel. And then I do this three-step process. First, I do three minutes of gratitude where I think of three things I'm really grateful for and I associate, I don't think of it over there, I feel it. And the reason is, when you're grateful, you can't be worried. You can't be fearful. When you're grateful, you can't be angry. And anger and fear are what screw people up most in their relationships, in their life, in their business. So I wire myself. I was saying to you that most people want to be happy, but their habit is to be worried or pissed off or frustrated or stressed. And so they're, they've got a highway to stress and they got a dirt road to happiness. So I wire myself. I've got a highway to gratitude, which changes all your emotions. And then I do a three minute process of kind of a prayer for my family and friends. And then I do a three minute process of the top three things I want to accomplish. I see it as done and I feel it. I'm done in 10 minutes. So sometimes I go 20, but my deal is 10. So there's no excuse not to do it. These thoughts that we have, we think they're our thoughts, so it makes it really hard to change them. When people meditate, try to not think thoughts. Show me somebody who's done that successfully, consistently. They're bullshit. Okay? Everybody, the mind thinks thoughts. But here's the distinction. If I told you 100 years ago, we we're going to fly to the moon and back, you would have called me a lunatic. That's where the term comes from. People still use it, and it doesn't make any sense, because a lunatic is somebody who thought we'd go to the moon and back, and we've done it, right? <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah, that's, that's where the term crazy. comes from. That's, that's where crazy. it comes from. But if I would have told you 100 years ago that there's going to be a box in your pocket and you're going to pull this thing out, you're going to hit a couple buttons and then it's going to capture invisible waves that are drifting around the earth and bring the waves in and you're going to see somebody on the other side of the earth and you're going to talk to them, you're totally nuts. Thoughts are those invisible waves. And when you use your body in a certain way, if I sit like this, I'm gonna channel, a, I'm gonna tap into a different channel of those waves than if I'm sitting like this. It's kind of like a TV set. If I turn one channel, it might be a comedy channel. I'm gonna see a lot of laughter. Turn another one, it's a horror channel. Turn another channel, it's a romance channel. 
this is what changes which of those waves you touch in. So if you can start to realize that your thoughts that you think are your thoughts, there's nothing unique about your thoughts. They've been around for thousands of years. You're just tapping into them because of what you're doing with your body that makes you either fearful or passionate or courageous or whatever you're feeling. As you go in those states, you get different thoughts. So what I want people to see is that learn how to just see those thoughts go by. Learn how to be entertained by those thoughts. Because I have crazy thoughts, and, but what I've gotten good at is going, look at that crazy thought. That's not me, that's the mind. Not your mind, because if it's you, how do you change you? Pretty hard. But I really truly know there's, I haven't heard a thought come out of you that's original. <laughs> you call them your thoughts, but they're not. You've stolen them. They've been around forever. When you see that, it's easier to let go of them. And letting go of those thoughts is one of the ways that you free yourself. And the, again, the more you do it, just like a muscle, you get better and better and better. And all of a sudden, the shit that used to make you crazy or stressed out, I'm like, how many things have you worried about that never came to be? And some people, their, their life is good, so they worry about other people. <laughs> you know, so they're, they're never not worried, right? So it's really just a pattern. If you want wealth, real wealth is not just money, it's emotion. It's like, what are we really after in money? You don't want money, you don't want pieces of paper with the pictures of deceased notables on it. You want what you think money will give you. You think it'll give you freedom or... Most people have a belief about what their real potential is no matter what you tell them. And that affects how much action they take. And of course that affects the result. And then ironically, that result reinforces their belief. And then that belief affects it. So I'll give you an example. Let's say a person has unlimited potential, we all agree. But they take little action, little results, why? Because they have to start with a problem with their belief. They don't believe it's really gonna happen for me. Maybe for Frank Kearns, because he's got the cool hair and stuff, or maybe it's for you because you're so driven, but it's not me. Maybe Tony Robbins, because he's a freak, got these big teeth. Whatever their thought process is, right? They got this thing, right? But what happens is, if you believe that there's very little potential, how much action are you gonna take? Nothing, little. And when you take little potential with a little action, what kind of results do you get? Lousy little results. And when you get little results, what does that do to your belief? You go, see, I told you this was a waste of time, sold you this wouldn't work. And then what happens? You tap even less potential. You take even less action. You get even worse results, and your belief gets even weaker. And this sucker feeds on itself until you are in the downward spiral. It's poisonous. It's poisonous and it's self-fulfilling. Now, what if something could happen that could come along and fill you with a sense of absolute certainty? Not like, I believe, but mean where you know. In you guys' case, mine as well, we knew because we had to. Because we burned the boats, there was no other option. We had to find a way. We had, we weren't going to live that way. We all did it in different ways and for different reasons, but in essence, that was it. If you get yourself in a state of certainty that this is going to work, I'm going to find a way. And if this doesn't work, I will make the way. Then you tap a lot more potential. And when you're certain in your potential, you take massive action. When you take massive action, you really believe in something, you get great results. When you get great results, your brain goes, see, I told you I was a stud. <laughs> I told you this thing would work out. Now you're even stronger. You tap more potential, take greater action, greater results. That's how you went from 300 bucks in a week to 2,500 in five days, to 100,000 in a month, to a million bucks in a day. Same thing with you. And we get momentum. That's why the rich get richer and the poor get poorer. Now some people go out and they go, well, I'm going to take a bunch of action, all right? I'm going to open this product. I'm going to try it. And they'll say to you, I even did it. But it's like a salesman who goes and knocks on the door and he knocks on 100 doors and says, <laughs> and even if he doesn't say it verbally, his face says it because he doesn't believe it's going to work. So his voice, his body, the execution is so weak. Maybe if he talks to 100 people, somebody's going to buy out of pity. <laughs> they don't want his kids to starve, right? But he's not going to get the result. So the core difference in people is how do you produce certainty when the world isn't giving it to you? You go out and you try and you try in your case, your 100,000 in debt, nothing's working. How do you keep yourself going? The way you did it, the way I did it, the way you're doing it, we may not have done it consciously, is we didn't change our potential that was there. And it wasn't even taking more action. Taking more action with a belief is not gonna work, it's not gonna change anything. We got results in our head that made us feel certain as if it had already happened. Or security or stability, or love, it won't give you love. It'll get you sex, it won't get you love. Money won't, right? So really what you're after is the emotion. And so what I want people to get is the emotion they want now, and all it is is a new habit. It's learning to discipline this mind, right? By realizing the mind thoughts are out there and letting them float by and constantly coming back to what can I love about this? What can I appreciate? It's like, if you can learn to love or at least appreciate, start to enjoy the things that you used to get upset about, 
How much freedom would you have? How much more joy would you have? And I know people who got billions of dollars, I've coached them, who is like, holy shit, they live in scarcity all the time. One man, I'll, I'll never forget, he's screaming at his wife. I'm in the meeting, I'm in, I'm in the house, and he's screaming at his wife because she spent some money on a bunch of outfits and stuff like that. And he's a multi-billionaire. He couldn't spend all his money in his lifetime. And then he's totally upset at his daughter who's in her 20s who spent some money too. And I'm like, I pulled him aside afterwards and I said, what do you do this for? And what do you do it for? And he's like, well, it's just, it's a principal thing. I said, no, the principal thing is, do you love these people? And do you want them to have an abundant life? When you have, there's, you don't have one loss, but you live like you're poor, you know? And it's like, I finally got through to him. But so many people, that's why I say money doesn't change you. Money magnifies who you are. So you want to expand the depth of who you are and free yourself from suffering by just knowing it's a pattern of thought and you can change the pattern of thought.